Yo, what's up guys? Lone coming at you with a it's kind of another tips and tricks video. This one's going to be covering over how to optimize your map a little bit and how to better use some prefabs for certain applications. So let's get started. The first one is utilizing the correct prefab for the job. Whenever you're making prefabs, you have to be careful about not going overboard with prefab count just because, yeah, some prefabs are very simple and don't cause lag. However, over time, if you duplicate them a number of times and have a lot of prefabs in one particular area, it will take a toll on FPS for clients. Now, with that said, I have two fences here. One of them is made out of pillars, individually placed pillars, to accomplish a fence of a little three by three size area roughly. Now this one looks like a great fence. It is 160 prefabs, which is quite excessive for a fence. So what I like to do personally is utilize another prefab for the job. So for this instance, I'm using the cabin floor. Cabin floors I love to use for fences just because they're an easy go-to. They have a similar fence effect. I mean, not as good quality, but it's but it's really good quality for the reduction of prefab count that you get. So for a total of 16 prefabs, I get a nice three by three size fence. And this one's actually a little bit larger in size just because I didn't scale the first one quite well. So as you can tell, utilizing the correct prefab for the job is gonna save you a ton in prefab count. The next one is avoiding certain prefabs. So every monument that I do, a lot of them entail visual effects such as lights and foliage and bushes and overgrowth. However, you have to try to balance it because if you make a map or a prefab or a monument and you have a bunch of foliage or fires or effects and you're noticing a lot of FPS drop, the first step I always recommend is reducing those prefabs. So in this case, I have a handful of prefabs here that I like to show for an example. This first one is a high area count of prefabs. This one's just the iOS handler. You can unlock this by unlocking all prefabs, uh, which I'll link down below as well if you haven't already done that. But in this case, I highly recommend not going too crazy with a bunch of prefabs in one particular area. Now this total in count is 6,144 prefabs, which in the all scale of things isn't a whole lot of prefabs. You can go a lot more than that on a map. However, in this one confined area, you're gonna see a significant drop in FPS, especially for lower end PCs. So if you're making something and it requires this amount of detail in a small area, I highly recommend you utilizing a different prefab or just avoiding making that high of detail in that area to begin with. The next one is the visual effects. There's a number of those. The main one I always see used and I use myself is the spark FX and the flickering light. These two are really awesome prefabs to get unique feels for certain areas. I absolutely love using the flickering light because if, if you place it on the ground and tilt it upward in a room, it has a really cool effect. So it's, it, it is a really cool prefab to use. However, I don't recommend using too many of them, maybe one or two max in a single monument, just because the flickering effect on it alone will add up quite a bit with performance. Same thing with fires. Most people generally use the hobo barrel always on. So you can scale this prefab really small and you can hide it inside of other prefabs, but the flame still stays the same size. With that said, anything that emits light such as fire or lights or spark effects, all of them have to cast a shadow onto prefabs nearby. And that's what plays a toll on performance is whenever all those prefabs within a single room or an area have to cascade those lights to the client. And I'm not gonna pretend like I know what I'm talking about as far as that goes. That's more like game development performance type of stuff. But generally staying away from too many lights is the point that I'm trying to make. The next one is reducing foliage. There's a lot of foliage that people would use on monuments. I use a lot in mine. However, using an efficient amount is what I highly recommend. So with the creeping plants and the creeping bushes and just general bushes, don't go too overboard with them. You can accomplish some things just by resizing bushes as well. So if you needed a little bit bigger bush, you can resize it. So it's, I wouldn't go too crazy with resizing just because the more you resize it, the higher the stretching goes. So it, you lose a little bit of detail. Generally, these are the main tips that I have as far as increasing performance on your map is just reducing high prefab counts in certain areas, reducing lights and effects, as well as fires and foliage. And the last tip I do want to cover, and I've covered this in a previous video, is the remove duplicates tool. You can find this by going to prefab tools and then just clicking on remove duplicates. 
This remove duplicates can take up to a couple seconds or even a couple minutes depending on your map size and it will generally delete anything that's duplicated in the same spot. So if there's a prefab that's in the same spot as another one, it will delete one of those. So it's going to reduce a lot of prefabs for your map depending on how many times you've duplicated something and accidentally left it there. So highly recommend running the remove duplicates tool. So I hope this guide helped you guys out a little bit. If you do have any comments, please drop them down below. Join the Discord by clicking the link down below as well. And I will also link those two videos that I referenced in the description as well or on screen. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope this increases your frames on some of your maps or monuments and I will see you next time.